please pose for the group photograph. Thank you, Dr. Harsha Gunasekar and Dr. K. Arulanandam. And moving on, we have next uh, Seeing Beyond the Surface, Decoding Common Imaging Techniques by Dr. K. G. Dayaratna, Consultant Radiologist. And I cordially invite the chairpersons, Dr. Niroshini De Silva, Consultant Family Physician, and Dr. Pradeep Gunavardhana, Consultant Family Physician, on stage to uh, move on with the next session. Good evening. Our next topic is Seeing Beyond the Surface, Decoding Common Imaging Techniques. That lecture is, is being done by KG, Dr. K.G. Dayaratna. Dr. K.G. Dayaratna is proud alumnus of University of Peradini and ventures to obtain his postgraduate training in the field of radiology. He is an honorary fellow in body imaging of National University Hospital, Singapore, and FRCR, UK holder. He has numerous publications and won several awards with respect to his expertise in the field of radiology. Dr. Dayaratna is currently rendering his service as the consultant radiologist in District Hospital, Nambulla. This is over to you, Dr. Dayaratna. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And again, uh, big thanks for the great opportunity to uh, talk to you all in your first uh, academic uh, session or the uh, for you all. So, uh, as you all know, uh, radiology again is a vast area, but I'll try to point out uh, some important uh, aspects which are more relevant to you all uh, during this uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, medical imaging or the radiology, as you all know, is a key, plays a key role in day-to-day -day clinical practice, uh, especially in the diagnosis and the plan in the management, as well as uh, prevention of diseases. Uh, there are so many imaging uh, modalities in day-to-day -day practice, X-ray, ultrasound scan, CT, MRI, PET scan, and some interventional radiological procedures. Uh, in spite of various advanced technological procedures, X-ray imaging remains the uh, most in the or commonest and the most cost-effective imaging modality all over the world for last 13 decades. You all know it's more and more important uh, low resource countries and centers like ours. So, that is the reason that I'll be more concentrating on X-ray imaging during this lecture. In day-to-day -day practice, about uh, 70 to 80 percent of clinical problems can be managed uh, with X-ray and ultrasound scan alone. Even the other imaging modalities are there. So I'll be talking to you on three common imaging X-ray techniques, uh, chest X-ray, X-ray spine, and imaging uh, for the bone tumor with X-rays. Uh, because of, uh, I want to show most of the images, I'll be mo moving uh, here and there uh, in the absence of a point. Uh, so you t at least if you can give some feedback that's okay. Otherwise, try to have your own answer with these x-rays. Most of the things are simple, but uh, those are very important because these are the things we can't miss. If you miss these in first x-ray or the pres presentation, then the patient might present in advanced multiple uh, condition which might cost the life of the patient. What is the abnormality here? Yeah. Uh, Try to have your own answer. Uh, it's maybe apparently normal looking x-ray, but if you carefully go through the uh, uh, either side of the x-ray, you see some irregular opacity in the right lung apex. So uh, that is easy to compare with the other side, then you realize there is something abnormal in the right lung apex. But though it's looking subtle, this is a advanced bronchial malignancy with adjacent bone destruction, it's a pancos tumor. 
So it's very important, always compare the either side of the lung epices. If there's any subtle changes or any doubt, you can ask for the epical view. This patient needs CT and MRI for the further assessment. But if we miss this one, so we won't proceed for the CT or the MRI. This is another X-ray. Please go through. What is the abnormality? Right. It's also maybe normal looking X-ray. Either I mean, the both sides of the lungs appear normal. There's no cardiomegaly. May not, there may, may not be an obvious abnormality. But if you carefully see, there is a rounded nodule in the retrocardiac region here. So this is a retrocardiac lung mass. It's understood and otherwise malignant. So we can't miss this. There is subtle atelectasis and small pleural effusion in the left side, but we have to see this nodule. So that is the second message that first review area is the lung epices. Second, look at the retrocardiac region for subtle masses. Third one, this is a fairly straightforward X-ray. Lung epices normal, retrocardiac region is fairly normal, but there is obvious nodular or the lobulated mass in the right hilar region, and there is subtle density in the left hilar as well. So this is bilateral hilar adenopathy, right more than left. So differential diagnosis may be uh, lymphoma, even uh, metastasis or the infection like TB. But most important thing, not to have a histological diagnosis, but we have to diagnose the abnormality. Then only we can proceed for the rest of the imaging and do the relevant referral. Keep in mind, look at the epices, look at the retrocardiac, move to the both hyla. Please practice to see more and more normal looking chest x-ray. Then only you can identify this abnormality. Again, maybe normal looking, normal looking x-ray, either side of the lungs, normal, no cardiomegaly, epices normal, retrocardiac region normal, hyla normal, anyone saw the abnormality? Yeah, it's gas under the diaphragm. I didn't give the history, but without history, we have to notice this. That is why we have to have our order of reading a chest x-ray. Not only a chest x-ray, we have to have our own order of looking at each and every x-ray. Otherwise, anybody can miss. Because it's a two-dimensional thing and most difficult imaging modality to interpret, even for us. So look at the under the diaphragm, maybe the pneumoperitoneum, maybe the pancreatic calcification, maybe bowel abnormality, but don't f forget to see the under the diaphragm in one of review areas. What is the abnormality? Right, uh, some, um, I think uh, you must have seen, there is definite abnormality in a left hemithorax along a rib, but this is not a lung mass, right? Both lung fields are normal, heart normal, epices normal, Retrocardiac region, hyla, under the diaphragm, normal. But then we have to see the all the bones and soft tissues of the X-ray. Go by the each rib, posterior to the anterior, and always compare. Then only we see the asymmetry or the abnormality. This is a expansile lytic lesion in posterior rib, maybe the fifth. So this is a metastatic bone disease in an adult patient. Not only the ribs, we have to carefully see the scapulae and even shoulder region and visible spine. So this is one of the review area, epices, retrocardiac, hyla, under the diaphragm, and we have to look at the, all the bones and the soft tissue, the uh, chest x-ray, even we have to identify the mastectomy in, in the, the is asymmetry. So, in chest x-ray, 
we all look at the lung fields and large lung masses even lay person can identify but if there is a normal looking chest x-ray please look at it carefully lung epicels retrocardiac region below the diaphragm hyla bones and soft tissue because that is very common area to miss findings so then only we refer for the further image i'll move to the next imaging technique spine but i have mainly concentrated on thoracolumbar spine because it's a very commonly image area and this is a normal uh, x-ray lumbar spine uh, where you have to look at the alignment whether the vertebral body look in a proper line you know the with kyphosis and there is curve that should be normal curve so once you see the alignment if there is any displacement anterior or posteriorly like uh, uh, spondylolisthesis you should identify in ap view you should identify whether there is sort of scoliosis once you assess the alignment go through the vertebral body heights go through each and every vertebral bodies and roughly should be in equal height if there is subtle difference then think of fracture or the destruction once you finish that go through the all the intervertebral spaces those also should be fairly equal not all but slightly can slight difference can be there but should be visible without uh, disturbances then always look at the end plates you know that whitish boundary of the bone superior and inferior end plates don't forget that's a very important area to look at i'll show you the changes later then you have to look at the posterior elements mean pedicle lamina spinous process and transverse process because don't forget that area because most of the malignant metastases occur in the posterior elements this is i think straightforward again but i want to read you the way i told or oh, according to your own way alignment there is slight straining straightening of the spine then go for the vertebral body heights then you realize there is reduction of vertebral body height in the l1 vertebral body predominantly anteriorly but then look at the disc spaces slight reduction at that level other levels are normal then look at the posterior elements posterior elements are intact so l1 wedge compression fracture it may be due to osteoporosis or they even can be secondary to the trauma because bone density appear fairly preserved yeah uh with magnification i'm not very sure what is the abnormality here this is the thoracic spine ap view again you go through the alignment that's preserved then vertebral body heights what do you think if you compare with this lower two is there any change of vertebral body heights then then we have to look for the disc spaces there is reduction of disc space at this level vertebral body heights start reduce but most important finding i want to know there is destruction of end plates end plate destruction the end plate should be like this white line straight but there is destruction some irregular in the either side of the vertebra intervertebral disc space so that is very important this is infective spondylitis tb or the pyogenic but that's why there is large paraspinal masses either side this is not hard shadow this large paraspinal masses the center to that this level this is in infective spondylitis tb or pyogenic most likely tb having that large paraspinal masses this patient need urgent mri ct and you know the further management so lesson is look at that in order and don't miss the disc space reduction and uh, end plate destructions again now the x ray what is the abnormality 
go to that order. Alignment is preserved. Vertebral body heights, fairly okay. But yeah, there's subtle difference. Then these spaces, these spaces are preserved. Then compare the either side, go for the posterior elements. There is cross destruction of the left pedicle here. These are the, you know, these are the pedicles. When I come to closer, it's not that clear. But you know that pedicles, compare the, all the pedicles. It should be equal, that I like appearance. And there is destruction of that pedicle. It's a L1 pedicle with probably the uh, body as well. So that's what is very important. When there is pedicular destruction in vertebral body, it's unless one otherwise metastasis. So this is a case of metastasis. Most important thing, compare the either side. Always look at the pedicles because pedicle destruction may be subtle, but that is a most important sign to identify the metastasis. Interpretation of spine x-ray include alignment, vertebral body height, intervertebral displaces, end plates, and posterior elements. Degenerative changes are common. You have seen enough. Be familiar with the de degenerative changes of the spine, then only you can identify the tumor infection and arthritis and all. So, the next topic I'm going to talk is the bone lesion assessment with X-ray. This is not that common, but why I selected this one? This is not common, but we can't miss this. Because if we miss the subtle bone lesion, next time patient comes with advanced metastatic bone lesion, which can't actually cure. This is very common in children. Uh, we have seen osteosarcoma. Once the child present, there's destruction with even lung metastasis. If we carefully see, most of these children having previous x-rays with very subtle lesions. So anybody can miss this, but we should try to minimize because this cost the life of the child. So x-ray knees, very important because Majority of osteosarcoma in children occur around the knee joint. So, this, this is from adult patient. Anybody notice any uh, changes? Right, okay. Again, go through along the, all the bo bones, cortex and medulla, with intent of detecting any bone lesions. There's very subtle lesion here. I don't know whether you can see it. Right, now, now might see it. There is subtle bone irregularity in the lateral aspect of lower femur. That is the metadiaphyseal region. That is very important because most of the, uh, these malignant lesions in children occur in metadiaphyseal region between the metaphysis and the diaphysis. So this is an early bone lesion in the metadiaphyseal region. So we have to see those carefully to identify. Then this patient need MRI, CT, and then uh, I think curative surgeries are possible. Thing is, I think some of you might report in the X-ray in workstations using computers. So always magnify this image and go through each and every bone carefully to look for subtle changes. We don't have to have a histological diagnosis. Just detecting abnormalities is enough. So we can refer and we can do the further imaging. So, if you are not using a workstation, if you are reporting in hard copies, we can take a good photograph of it into your phone and magnify it and go through the bone very carefully. So, if we miss that level, I think this is the level patient might present. As in, it's not difficult to identify, but now the lesion has gone to the even uh, epiphysis and more destructive soft tissue component. So this is advanced bone lesion. So we should not wait until this stage comes. This is another bone lesion, obvious bone lesion in a diaphysis. There is obvious cortical irregularity and destruction. There is medullary involvement. And there are also, 
you can see there's periosteal reaction there's subtle haziness like adjacent to the bone and large soft tissue component so this is typical appearance of advanced malignant bone lesion this is a uh, and case of uh, ewing sarcoma ewing sarcoma probably the uh, second commonest of primary bone tumor in children so i included this topic because you may be the first doctor to look at these lesions in the children especially the in children adults because adults primary bone tumors are extremely rare except plasma cytoma or the multiple myeloma like thing but children primary bone tumors are common even not common but we have to identify early to save the uh, ch uh, children life and the probably the limbs so x-ray provide one of the cheapest primary screening tool for the diagnosis of bone tumors evaluation of margin of the bone is the most important factor and in addition when you interpret when you interpret the bone lesions age and gender is more important so at the end what i would tell you is x-ray is the most important imaging modality even after 130 years of discovery of the x-ray is still all over the world so that is same for us so try to look at the each and every x-ray with a purpose take your time see it carefully even if there's subtle difference you can send for the reporting you can send to the specialty for the further assessment because we don't have to uh, have a histological diagnosis most important thing is to detect the abnormality so thank you very much so i didn't include any advanced imaging technique because if we miss that this stage i think no point having a mri or the ct or the pet scan because uh, those are not important unless you detect this so thank you very much so it's, i i i thought it's great opportunity to me to uh, share my uh, knowledge with you uh, again thank you very much for your kind attention thank you very much dr dayaratna you have given a informative lecture for us in behalf of the college of specialist family physician thank you again for your lecture any questions open for the from the audience that's means no questions thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and thank you very much sir dr kg dayaratna who did the procession on seeing beyond the surface decoding common imaging techniques and to give away the token of appreciation